From the Startup screen, click on Open. Browse to your Chapter 14 folder and open up Chapter 14 Electrical. In previous exercises, we've looked at the mechanical settings. Now it's the turn for electrical. From the Systems tab, look at the electrical panel. This has a little checkbox which we can click on to access electrical settings. Here we can define all the settings associated with the electrical discipline, whether we want to show hidden lines, when objects are stacked on top of each other, and some of your more specific electrical settings that really need to be defined in your project template, like circuit naming by phase. In some geographic locations, A, B and C might be adequate. In other locations, you may have other naming conventions. The electrical data style refers to how some of the data is referred to in the family. Let's just take a look at that. If I click on OK and select a light fitting, let's just drag the properties palette out and scroll down to the bottom. Here we've got the electrical circuiting, electrical data, and we've got a description, the voltage, the phase, and the load. So we've got different ways of displaying these. Also, how do we want our load names to be displayed? Whether we want to use the source parameters, initial, sentence, or uppercase. The definitions defined under electrical settings should match your local conditions and should be set up in your project template. If you're having to come into this dialog box every time you start a project, then somebody seriously needs to be talking to your Revit manager about having your project template set up before you even start. As you can see from here, there's a fair amount that needs setting up, and they have to be done right in order for the electrical systems to work correctly. Take voltage definitions, for example. Here we have a wide range of voltage definitions, but we also need to use distribution systems to make the circuiting work. Also as part of the electrical settings are the cable tray and conduit settings. These allow us to define the sizes of annotation display and how we define single line and two line symbology for our cable trays and for the conduits. We can also define the standard sizes that we're going to use for cable tray. And we have similar settings for conduits. If you want to change any of these, select an appropriate symbol from the dialog box. Load calculations. Here we can define load classifications for different types of electrical loads. Here you can see where I select socket. We can choose a type of demand factor. These are fully customizable. We can create our own, duplicate them for an existing. And for the demand factor, we can do the same. Once again, this needs to be carefully set up at the outset. We can also then select the load class for use within spaces. Finally, panel schedules. We will be looking at panel schedules in a lot more detail further on in this chapter. This just gives us an area where we can define specific standard labels, whether we want spares shown in panel totals, and whether we want to merge multipoled circuits into a single cell, which may be the default for your region or company standard.